Hey, what's going on guys and welcome back to another Fallout 4 mod review. Today we have a brand new exciting release that caught me completely off guard and that is the Capital Wasteland Rocket Launcher by Xanthir. Now, if you're not familiar with the Rocket Launcher, this is a weapon from Fallout 3 that has been faithfully recreated in this mod for Fallout 4. Now, for those of you who are somehow unaware, this is a weapon from Fallout 3, which is the precursor to the Fallout 4 Junk Jet, a weapon that allows you to make use of your miscellaneous scrap items and use them as projectiles that you can throw at your enemies and deal some surprising amounts of damage. Simply load any of your favorite junk items or junk items that have no uses in current crafting recipes and they will do damage based on their weight, which I think is a really cool mechanic and one that I'm really glad they brought back into Fallout 4. But in case you didn't like Fallout 4's junk jet design, you can now use the classic Fallout 3 version thanks to Xanthir. A really cool feature of this mod is that it does feature the backpacks that were present in Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas. Whenever you throw on a heavy weapon, you actually do have a backpack either with ammo or some sort of power source, and in this case it is actually a vacuum cleaner, which I think is pretty funny. This mod does make use of custom animations as it has a completely new rig when it comes to holding the weapon. It doesn't have much in the way of reload animations considering the very unique style of ammo this weapon uses. You don't actually use a reload animation, rather you open up a menu and decide which kind of junk items you'd like to fire. Now, by far my favorite feature of this mod is the way it is integrated into the wasteland. It's actually very, very lore friendly to Fallout 3. You actually have to craft this item since it is made entirely out of scrap pieces and it's done so in a really cool way. Xanthir has added all of the original parts needed to craft this weapon to the junk leveled list, so you can actually find them out in the world. Those items are going to include bricks, conductors, fire hose nozzles, fission batteries, vacuum cleaners, leaf blowers, and wood chippers, all of which you're going to need to pick up if you want to craft this thing. Once you've obtained all the items though, you're also going to need the crafting recipe. If you want to obtain that, it will spawn at one of four locations. You can grab it from Myrna, the merchant in Diamond City. You can grab it from Cricket, the wandering weapon trader. You can find it at the very top of the Libertalia Raider outpost. And you can even find one locked in the case with the Cryolator in Vault 111. Once you've grabbed one of these recipes, simply head over to a chemistry station, find the new handmade weapon category, and craft yourself a rocket launcher. Now I'm sure you're wondering, typically when it comes to crafting recipes or perk magazines, there's only one unique version of it hidden around the wasteland, but in this mod there's four. Well, if you obtain one of these crafting recipes, it will of course allow you to craft the weapon, but any other variants of the recipe that you obtain will add 10% more damage to this weapon, which I think is a pretty cool idea, making you want to go and collect the rest of the recipes. Now that you have all the details on how to craft this thing, let's go check this weapon out in-game and talk about its stats. So here we have the rocket launcher in the preview menu where you can get a look at the weapon as well as the vacuum cleaner backpack. This thing has a base damage of 50 which can of course be bumped by either the heavy weapons perk or a heavier type of junk item that you can use as the ammo type. You have a fire rate of 20, a range of 119, an accuracy of 80, a weight of 8 pounds and a value of 200 caps which I think is a pretty balanced set of stats considering you do have to craft this thing with the newly added unique crafting items which is pretty cool and definitely a fun way to obtain this weapon. Now then, let's talk about how usable this thing is in combat, starting off with its accuracy. This thing, without any attachments, has no iron sights whatsoever, and is not super accurate at range, so let's just see how this thing does. I have this loaded up with bricks currently, giving us a pretty small projectile, so let's see if we can actually hit these targets. Starting with close range, it's the target no problem. Medium range is a hard thing to aim at since we have no sight, but we actually do nail it. And at longer ranges, you're going to have a bit of trouble lining it up if you don't add any sight on. As you can see, it takes us quite a few hits to actually get that target. Now then, let's see how the damage performs in-game using some Death Claws as our damage baseline. I'll be using one pound brick, so the damage is the same across the board, but on the second test, we'll be cranking up our heavy weapons perk to see how much it can actually increase the damage output. Now then, starting off with this Death Claw here, with no perks, no attachments, using one pound bricks, let's see how this thing does. As you can see, this is doing nearly no damage to the Death Claw. It does fare pretty well against humanoid enemies, but against bigger targets like this, you're probably going to want to find a different combat option.
And finally, the Deathclaw is down next to our pile of bricks, which by the way, if I haven't mentioned, just like the vanilla junk jet, you can pick up the items after they've been used. So you do have a reusable ammo source, which is pretty nice considering how many shots it does take sometimes. Now then, let's see how this thing does with maxed out heavy weapons perks. Now in theory, this should just double the damage output, but that should still be a pretty nice increase from 50 to 100 damage. Definitely a very noticeable improvement. Still going to take quite a few shots for a Deathclaw, though. But honestly, not too shabby compared to the version without perks. So I definitely recommend picking up Heavy Gunner if you're going to try to use this weapon. Now then, let's see some of the ways that you can increase the damage output over at the weapons workbench. Starting off with the receiver section, we have the standard receiver, an electrified receiver, which will add 20 energy damage, and an ignited receiver, which will add 38 energy damage. We also have a barrel section where you can throw on an extended barrel to increase the range and accuracy. We have a grip option, which adds a brace grip, which will improve the value. It does have some recoil benefits, but those are not shown on the stat block. We have the option to throw on some makeshift sights, which will increase the accuracy and make this thing a bit more viable for actually hitting your targets. We do have one muzzle option, which is a bayonet that does function and have its own little thrusting animation, so that's pretty cool. And then we do have three paint options. We have the standard paint, the Electro Sucks 3000 paint, which will be a nice red paint job for everything, and then the General Atomics paint, which will give you a nice blue backpack and a yellow launcher. So that's pretty cool that you do have some cosmetic options for this weapon. Altogether, the Rocket Launcher does make for a very fun weapon in combat. It doesn't perform too terribly well against higher level enemies or enemies with a pretty large health pool, which is an odd quirk to have as a heavy weapon, but it does still fare pretty well against lower level enemies or anything humanoid. Of course, it does have the added benefit of being able to use scrap items for ammo, and of course, you can retrieve those items after the fact, so maybe the low damage is pretty fine in terms of balancing. Regardless of how it performs, though, this is definitely an awesome weapon to see added back into Fallout 4, an absolute classic one that brings back a whole lot of nostalgia. I would like to see a leveled list version of this weapon, to be honest. I know this is a very faithful recreation of Fallout 3's style, where you have to go and craft it and find all the components, but that being said, I don't see why only the Soul Survivor could craft this weapon. This is something that could totally be made by Settlers, or even Raiders, or maybe even Minutemen. It is a pretty junky item, and I think the Minutemen could make pretty cool use of a weapon like this. But that is probably something that's common to see. We may see a leveled patch for this thing sometime in the future. If that is the case, I think that'll make for a pretty cool weapon to see running around the wasteland, and will definitely add to the cool scrappy handmade options that you'll see in the hands of some of your wasteland enemies. But with that, I think we're going to go ahead and wrap this up. I hope you guys enjoyed the weapon. I know I did. If you'd like to try it out, it will be linked down in the description below, and it's available for not only PC, but Xbox as well. With that, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to drop a rating. Consider subscribing if you haven't already for more videos just like this. As always, a big shout out to all of my patrons for supporting every single video as well as the mods I make, and a very special thank you to Avian4, Captain Chaos, Freedom, Glasma, Helljumper, Indecisive Wolf, Jackie Noid, Kid Hades, Cushy, Logan Rigmated, Microhan, Moonlit Gamer, Oscar, Scott, Steven, Timmy76, YouthRC, and Voider for joining that tier 3 Patreon membership. You guys are so generous and I cannot thank you enough. If you'd like to support the channel over on Patreon, you can do so using the link down in the description, but it is completely optional. Thanks again for watching guys, and I hope to see you all in the next one. Peace!